Hey guys, my name is Callie and I'm the creator of Glazed Epoxy. And today I'm gonna show you guys how I did this really pretty charcuterie board. Charcuterie, sh charcuterie, I'm not sure how you say it. Snack board, snack platter, tray, cutting board, any of those words can be used. But these are something that is just so popular, whether it's epoxy or not. Um, I feel like just the grazing boards, charcuterie boards in general are just such a fun thing. Um, they're great as gifts. They're great to kind of just put all your pretty food out for a gathering or a party. And it just kind of makes it more fancy and just so elegant and just, I, I can't get enough of it. Like I love these kind of boards and I feel like if you're doing one like this, it's always hard to get the edges to look good. Uh, I've tried painting them first. I've tried doing a layer of epoxy just on the edge first and then doing another layer on the top. I, I never really gotten it to look good. So this one I tried just taping off the edge and peeling off the tape so that I don't have to worry about it. And I actually really like how it turned out. I feel like it looks really nice and professional and finished. There's no kind of weird spots where there's not enough epoxy or not enough color and I didn't have to worry about drips. So this was just a really nice way to do this. If you guys are interested in seeing how I did this charcuterie board, let's get into the video. All right guys, just starting off with this really beautiful cutting board I found at Ross for only $12.99. Ross and TJ Maxx is where it's at to find really great prices on just kind of boards like this that are just done already and you just need to sand them a little bit to prep them for the epoxy so it adheres well and will not chip off of the board. You could sand it more if you want. That's what I do. Then just taking some electrical tape, I kind of wanted to use this kind just because it gives me a nice clean line and is really easy to work with and won't just tear easy. So just lining it up and taping it down. Then I also taped off the bottom with just some bigger tape so that if there was any drips, it would just come off easy with the tape. So using these leveling feet from DIY Epoxy to just set my board on. These are really nice because they just spin so you can level anything you're working on so none of your color or uh, designs that you do like drip off. I've definitely done that before and if you make it level it just stays put where you want it to stay and won't just kind of all run to one side or the other. So just make sure your work surface is level. Then mixing up my epoxy. This is the DIY Artisan Epoxy. I love this for doing stuff like this. It's a little bit thicker, but that way you can get it done in one coat if you want. Anything like this, you can do multiple layers, but if you want to do just one coat, this is going to allow you to do that and let you have enough color where you don't have any see-through spots or um, spots where it's just too thin. So now just pouring off some of the epoxy to make my colors. So the first color, this is kind of like a dusty pink kind of color, dusty rose, 
And in that second one, I added some white, and that one's just white. That one is opal mica powder and some gold mica powder. And when I'm doing any boards like this, I really like to have my main colors be really similar. So that's why I did the rose color and then the rose color with some white to make it a little bit lighter. So then I'm just drizzling on the main kind of dusty rose color. And adding in a little bit of that lighter rose color. some of the white and I try to keep things kind of going in the same kind of direction without just doing you know wavy lines the exact same throughout I kind of try to like make some lines come off of each other and just like there's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing just kind of making it flow together without just literally being wavy lines that are just the same all the way across Here's some of the pearl. I think the pearl or opal. Why do I always call it pearl? The opal just adds really nice dimension to it. It just kind of gives it this like realistic looking kind of sparkle without being like a glitter. And it just, the color of it is really nice. It looked really nice with the rose tones that I was doing. And I just, I can, like, I don't think I can ever do any kind of project with epoxy without using mica or without using the opal mica now just using some of the gold mica to add a little bit of accents now the gold is if you're doing it on lighter colors like this it will show up darker almost like a dark brown when you're not seeing it in the sunlight but when you see it in the light it does shine that really bright beautiful gold so i like to use it just as an accent and not do too much of it So then just using the heat gun to move around the color and kind of just blend the edges together and also make the gold mica kind of float and do the cool effects that it does when you use heat on it. Um, and see how the, fir the front line kind of looks like a wave like that. So it's just kind of up to you what you like, but I kind of just move everything around a little bit, give it some extra dimension. And then I also spray some alcohol on it and it helps kind of break up the color and give it those little kind of spots and speckles. And I felt like it needed a little bit more, so don't be afraid to kind of play with it and move things around. With the Artisan Epoxy, you do have 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your temperature and all of that, but it, you can work with it for quite a while, so don't be afraid to kind of change things up and add things as you need them. Um, I like to start with less and then I can always add more. So like you see here, I'm using the heat gun again. It doesn't, you know, affect it that you've already used the heat gun. So and then adding more alcohol. Then just with my finger kind of wiping the edges, 
to get a lot of the epoxy off the tape because what's gonna happen if you just let it completely go over the tape, you're gonna risk the epoxy kind of peeling and chipping off if you take it off when it's dry. So a couple of times I went back and just wiped it off. Even when it was pretty tacky, I just kept wiping it off of the tape. You can see how the alcohol just kind of makes it get these really cool little spots and kind of makes everything move. So then just taking the tape off, you can see I had scraped off most of the epoxy when it was still a little tacky. And apparently I was not in the camera frame that well because you can't really see what I'm doing, but just removing the tape. And I wanna say this was about six to eight hours after I poured this. So the epoxy is still a little bit soft. So with some that got on the underneath somehow, I don't know how it did that, but I had it taped. Um, if you have this, if the epoxy hasn't fully cured yet, you can just take alcohol and rub a lot of it off. Or if it is cured, you can just sand it off, but this is just easier if you catch it at the right time. And this charcuterie board was finished. That is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.